if you've been following along, you know I've been waiting for my piston rings to show up so we can get the motor for this thing put back together. Uh, we got everything else kind of you know squared away. I had a little setback the other night with uh, a little bit of dirt and debris and the furnace fan kicking on, and I had to tear everything apart that I had previously assembled to re-clean everything. Uh, it was a bad positioning situation. Uh, we're back to where we started, but my rings showed up and they're sitting over there. So I figured I would do a quick video here, sort of like a little short or a tech tip kind of video. Um, I'll show you the rings I got. We'll talk a little bit about cylinder hone and why it matters and differences in some of the measurements that you would hear uh, talked about for a hone finish and what um, what's critical. So we'll get going on showing you what I got here. So here's what I decided to go with. We're going to run total seals this go around. Um, I got one piston. I took the rings off just to do some measuring, comparing. But uh, this is the new set. I had emailed them saying, I. so I come from, like, cars are my background. Total seals been around for a long time. I've always been kind of intrigued by their gapless ring setup. And I figured, why not get a hold of them and see if they can do something for a Nicosil plated motorcycle motor on boost, on methanol. Gave them all the details. They hooked me up. So we're going with their, uh, it's a gapless top ring and basically a conventional style second and oil ring, but this top ring is pretty trick. And the reason it's gapless is I will show you here. So here is basically your top ring. Looks pretty normal, right? Well, if you flip it over on the bottom side, I'll try to get some good light on this. You can see it's stepped. What that does is basically there's a secondary ring that will go on the bottom of that step. It looks like it looks like an oil ring, only it is not. Similar in style, but it's different. You can't interchange these. So what'll happen is this is upside down right now so I can kind of show you. So that step is facing up. Normally that step would be, this This ring is going to go to the bottom side. So this ring on the piston would normally be installed this way up. But for demonstration purposes, we're laying it down. And now we got a regular gap that we can, you know, file fit, do what we need to do. I got my ring gapper out. Now the secondary ring will go in there and it will fit in that stepped area and when these are compressed on the piston, you will have no gap. Pretty trick, huh? Now, is this for everybody? Is this going to work awesome? I don't know. Uh, they got a real good reputation, and talking to them, I'm looking for some pretty decent results on this. So, I am going to get going on gapping these, but I figured before I start tearing into, you know, putting that stuff back together, we talked a little bit about cylinder hone. So I'll explain to you a little bit of what you would hear talked about with cylinder hone. I had talked to them about what to do to prep cylinders for this, uh, this new ring setup I want to run. And they are Nicosil cylinders, so they're still plated. I, uh, I run stock bore. All I'm doing is I want to go for a 240 finish, 240 grit finish. I'm not sending these suckers out to get rehoned or replated by anybody else. I'm going to do this here. Like everything else, I'm doing it here. And you've you've seen these before, but you can hone Nicosil with what some people call a dingle ball hone. It's a flex hone, and it's 240 grit, and it's silicon carbide. This will hone Nicosil. Nicosil is a real hard surface finish, uh, or surface coating. This will hone it. With that said, we are not looking to resize this motor. Again, like everything else, you, if you start like polishing or doing anything, you are removing some amount of material. With that said, we're not taking massive amounts off to really affect the overall operation of the motor. Might it change a few things in the big picture? Maybe. I'll never know. You'll never know the difference. But all we're doing is we're going to change the cross hatching in the cylinders for a different finish. For these rings and we'll talk a little bit now about um see i have different you know grits of these two i got 
Actually, I got one from my truck when I redid that too. See that? This one here is a 320. I'd used this previously. 240 is what we're going for with the new ring package. So now let's talk a little bit about uh, hone finish and why it matters. All right, so the whiteboard's full, so we're doing this uh, old school uh, clipboard and printer paper style. I'm gonna crudely draw in our cylinder here as our deck up on top. Cylinder with apparently a little machining error right here. Um, so the, the cylinder finish is uh, where you decide what hone you're going to use. Again, I'm not doing this in a machine. I'm not taking this somewhere to have it honed. I am simply hitting this with a flex hone with the grit they recommend for me using these rings. And we're going to replicate the cross hatching. Um, that cross hatching is what retains the oil. You need oil to seal. You need oil for the pistons to not rub the walls and wear themselves out. So the hone is basically putting all the way down the surface of the cylinder this rough finish. I only draw this on one side, you get the point. So these peaks are where the, uh, the piston and the rings would ride. Now if those stayed sharp points, they would basically wear the rings right off and wear the pistons out. Uh, you, you, you need to knock them peaks down. And that's what the different grits of hone do. The different grits of the hone leave different peaks and valleys. So for every peak the hone leaves, it also leaves a valley. The peak is basically where your bore size comes from more or less the valley is basically cut into the wall it's like a, it's, a, it's a negative side of things so that that average peak and valley measurement is a number that would be it's called an ra number so it's, it's a surface finish I, guys that do like metallurgy and stuff would understand ra surface finish um it's just the overall roughness the hone directly lays down an RA number, we'll say. So now the, the next thing we'll talk about that you'd hear is a number, um, again, I, I don't know what my numbers, there's a tool that measures this stuff called a profilometer, would give you an actual hard number for everything we're gonna talk about. And that changes based on needs, wants, uses, whatever you're gonna do with it. Uh, I'm just trying to break down what the, what the numbers would actually mean not what the numbers are. If that makes any sense? I'm not taking this to get measured. This is just a breakdown of why hone finishes matter. But there's another rate or a measurement called RPK. RPK. That number is the average peak height, which is directly related to RVK. Your RVK number is your peak depth. Not, I'm sorry, I said peak depth. The valley depth. The valley is where the oil is held. The peaks are where the piston is riding. So now, you don't want a hone so rough that it leaves these jagged points, but you don't want a hone so fine that it doesn't leave you know, anything, which also means it's not going to leave you know, as smooth as the peaks are. It's also not put in much of a valley. You'll have no place for the oil to go and create a seal. That's where you get a bunch of piston skirt wear and a bunch of blow by. So this is where we're, we're, we're trying to find that, that magic middle ground of where you have as, so the more peak you have, the less, less, the less friction you would have in there. Cause it's technically touching less surface. So you want to have enough peak to have low resistance, but not so much peak that it creates wear. At the same time, you need valley to create oil, but not so shallow that it can't hold that oil. Now there's a number, another number here is RK. And that's the average depth based on your RPK and your RVK. It's basically the measurement from total peak or total valley to 
total peak. That would be your RK number. So we're starting to get kind of scribbly here, but following along, it's not super hard to understand. It's just, it gets confusing because everything is an R number, RPK, RVK, RK, RA. Um, so I'm trying not to misspeak. So I'm stumbling around here, but I'm just trying to do a quick breakdown of what, what it means and why it matters. But the, the, the simplistic version of this is cylinder wall, straight as can be. Look at that, it's perfect. Cylinder wall will have a peak. I'm, I'm saying peak, but it doesn't technically go to a point. We don't want a point. It'll be flat. And then it goes into a valley. Now the valley would technically have, if I mean, this, this is so hard to explain because this is very exaggerated drawings here. That valley should be pretty close to match the peak. But the problem is, is that as the motor wears, this is where your pistons are riding over here and your rings. This is where the wearer comes in. It can't wear the valley out. It only wears the peaks out. So this is where as the motor gets more and more worn, these peaks start going away. These high points start going away. And uh, it basically becomes flat where you have nothing more than just a small valley remaining. Um, but we want this whole area for oil. And then as, as you get wear, this area here starts to go away. Now you're down to basically nothing left for a seal. But the trick is to figure out what grit or what, what hone grit is going to give you that finish for low friction, good seal, no consumption. That's all these numbers mean. RA surface finish, RPK is your point height, your peak height, RVK is your valley depth, and RK is just the average between them. And this stuff is all measured, like microscopically measured. So that's why it's hard to draw this to have it make sense. Because you would look at this and be like, that doesn't make any sense. We're a piston, the ring, the ring would get stuck in there. Well, that's because this is about a gazillion times exaggerated. But that's basically the uh, simplest way I could break down hone finish. And again, I am not an expert on this. I talk to people smarter than me. They give me breakdowns. And then once I make sense of it, I just try to pass on some info to you guys to help you make sense of it. You can do with this knowledge what you wish. And this is what I'm going to do with it because you don't want to overcomplicate things. So the long and the short of it is that uh, the hone finish matters. And because I don't have a profilometer, which my diagram isn't the greatest because I the, the tool to actually show these, you know, these measurements, these scales, uh, it, it, it's, it looks the surface of the cylinders, the hone finish itself, at a microscopic level. That's why uh, it, it, there's an average peak height, an average valley height, because we're basically changing the surface of the cylinders. We're just taking a stone and grinding a finish into those. So it's, it, they're not perfect all the perfect peaks or plateaus are not or are not oh, perfect all of the peaks and plateaus are not perfect all of the valleys are not perfect because we're using a stone to shape them um but you can look at a, like i said that the profilometer the right the right tool shows that it would show on a screen it would show where the peaks and valleys are at a microscopic level and you just want to see a consistent you know, reading basically. Am I going to get that using a dingle ball hone or a flex hone? No. Am I going to get close enough to make this thing work the way I want it for being built in a garage? Absolutely. It'll be fine. Um, but if you really wanted to get down to the, you know, brass tacks on this stuff, maybe there's a little more power to be found by having this thing, you know, or any motor in general, you know, honed by, you know, the right tooling. Um, I obviously don't go that route just because I'm cheap and I want to do everything here. But uh, I hope my diagram made sense. And uh, you, you, to take something away from this as far as just general, like everyday engine knowledge, you can 
kind of understand why those peaks and valleys and plateaus matter and where the oil goes and what the oil actually does and how not enough can hurt and how you know where the right where the oil needs to be the right spots but it's fun stuff so enjoy take it run with it go uh go do some experimenting and try some different things mm -hmm.